Coming up on this episode of the Spiro Podcast, what happens after? How do we handle that from a business perspective of, okay, we've completed the shoot, now what? Welcome to the Spiro Podcast, managing your real estate photography and videography business. With your hosts, Todd Kivimaki and Craig Magwell. Hi, and welcome to the Spiro Podcast, managing your real estate photography and videography business. Spiro is a software platform designed to help you manage your day-to-day -day business in real estate media and really help you grow and scale your business. I'm Craig Magrum, and along with me each and every week, Todd Kivimaki, our owner and founder and, and uh, co-host of the podcast. Todd, it's uh, it's been a, a great last week of September. We've been, we've been busy. We have been, Craig. Welcome, everybody. Good to, good to have you guys or spend some time with you. And it has been busy. I think that the year has been pushed back for us. So we typically see a larger mm -hmm. bell curve, May, June, July. That got pushed back. Wow. <laughs> yeah, everybody was hustling around here. It's fun to see those things come in, but it has been busy around here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're, when we're recording, this is typically on Fridays. So we're getting ready to head into the weekend and, um, you know, have some, some fun things planned. I, 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 didn't tell you I was going to mention this, Todd, but uh, I, I was up really early this morning. I woke up at 4.30. Why? I oh, have no word. idea. Yeah. Went out, took a walk and, you know, just got some exercise in, came back. And it was about a quarter to six. And my youngest, uh, Zeke, who's eight years old, he's in third grade. All of a sudden I hear, Daddy, I'm like, Zeke, what are you doing up? It's way too early. I couldn't sleep. So he came down and, you know, curled up with me on the couch and we were talking and, I, I've just been thinking more about parenting and investing in my kids. And as mm -hmm. I said, Zeke, what's something that you want daddy to teach you? And he didn't miss a beat. He said, math. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I said, daddy's terrible <laughs> at math. <laughs> I'm, I'm a t yeah, but you taught me some math last year. He he loves numbers. And and I don't, we're an adoptive family. He doesn't get it from me, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I had showed him some simple algebra last week because I wanted to challenge him because I know he loves numbers and he wanted me to show him some more math. I'm like, no, you're going to learn that at school. No more math for me. <laughs> I, I said, what's well, something else? Something. I said, hey, what about ham radio? Because I'm a licensed ham, right? Uh huh. There and I go. said, there's math in that. There's electronics because he mentioned science as well. I'm like, so ham radio has science. You learn about radio waves and electronics and there's math. He's like, yeah, because older brother got his ham license. So mm -hmm. I'm like, OK, well, I'll, I'll help you study. Here's the deal. If, if you, there's no pressure, you don't have to do this. I'm, no, no, no. I want to. I'm like, OK, I'll help you study. If you study and you pass your technician license, I will do two things. I'll get you your own little radio and I'll take you down to the Dayton Hamvention, which is the largest gathering of hams in mm. the world. Last year, I think we had 32 plus thousand hams all in the, in the wow. Dayton, Ohio area. Yeah. So it was a fun start to my day. And uh, also I had a great conversation. I know this is totally rabbit trail, uh, but my, my dad has been going through some things and I've just been trying to spend more time with him. And I, I shot him a text yesterday and um, I love documentaries and I'm mm, like, dad, did mm -hmm. you, did you see the new documentary on Amazon about Rolex? Oh. And he said, yeah, I mean, nice time pieces are, it's just interesting. All the, the intricacies of these. Right. So he texts back. He said, no. So I wrote back. I said, well, dad, it's about time. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm done. I, I, <laughs> we just lost 10% of our podcast listeners. <laughs> I was I was thinking that you were going to give me something to watch this week. And Craig, I realized there's nothing watch. to watch. You're going to watch? Oh, shit. <laughs> I didn't even mean to do that. <laughs> Craig, we just you lost are the another master of all pun. <laughs> We just lost another 10% of our listeners. I'm so sorry, guys. What, <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Whatever rule is out there about podcasting and hooking someone at the beginning and getting to the meat of whatever it is. <laughs> we yeah, just we, broke it. Talk about the bell curve. We just we just went <laughs> off the curve. We enjoyed it. So we hope for the, the six of you listening left with us. Right? We hope that you enjoyed it, too. <laughs> all right. All right. I'm going to stop babbling. Uh, I used to be D DJ. People always said, shut up and play the music. So anyway, I'm going <laughs> to so let's. 
Let's get into it. Welcome back to another episode of Spiro, everyone. Uh, we got a great topic, but before we get into that, um, Todd, we want to talk about a couple of great conferences coming up. I'm going to let you take the lead on that here. Yes, we. it's education time again. There mm -hmm. are different paces for things that you do in life, and finding that rhythm is important. Most of us are going into a slower time, thus a great time that we slow down and our brains can actually absorb, absorb <laughs> a little bit more, whatever that word is. That was, right. it, was 12, it was a 12 a.m. flight last night. Sorry, I, I got back. I'm, uh, PMRE, PMRE conference, it's out in Vegas. Both of these are out in Vegas. So the REP conference and PMRE are both out in Vegas. REP is the first week in November, and then PMRE follows it. So great great conferences i'm going to be at both eli jones and his team the rep team they are the first week a lot about business uh and just connecting uh love that conference it'll be the first year or i've heard a lot of great things about it i'm excited to be and going this year and then also the week after is the uh pmre conference craig mm -hmm. and i were there last year i will be back again this year i'll be back with nick uh, so nick and i will be there and we're in booth 10. Come and find us. Would love to connect with you guys. I am also going to be there that full like 10 days, I think. So come and find me. I'd love to connect with you guys. I have really enjoyed connecting with so many of you. It's just great to be able to call you for you guys to connect with me, learn about your businesses and, you know, just connect with the community. So that's what I think the bigger selling point is about these conferences. Mm -hmm. But those are coming up. If you need a discount code. I have a discount code to PMRE. So if you're going to go, let me know. Hello at Spiro.media. I will send you over the discount code. And I think that's, Craig, what am I missing about the conferences? Not much. I mean, connecting with others, networking, talking, talking shop, uh, exchanging ideas. Um, it, it's amazing mm -hmm. the number of things that w we get stuck in routines, right? And how we do things. And if it's working, you know, we're thinking if it's working, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But you, you'd be amazed at the new ideas that you can take from others, learn from others and implement and, and see what it does for you and your business in, in your local market. Um, so it's just some great grassroots education that you can get at these conferences as well, I would say. Uh, agreed. Agreed. I will do, give me uh, 60 seconds, everyone, about updates to Spiro. This is the Spiro podcast. So I've purchased these 60 seconds from the Spirit Podcast. <laughs> Updates this week. Webhooks. Many of you have asked for it. So webhooks were just launched a couple days ago. So now you can send a webhook to trigger another system on just about every event in the system. So that's really cool. More information to come from it. Also, you can import your clients by yourself now. We used to have to awesome. do this for you. So yeah, when you log in, you can go to um, clients, then you click companies or agents, and you got a nice little import button there. You click import. We have a template for you, or you can give us your import list, and we will map those columns. You can map them if you want. You hit import, and then they're in your system. So that's exciting. Excellent. Many other just fine-tuned updates went in. Uh, so you'll see those and look and feel those in the system. We're pushing things all the time, you guys. I realize that pop-up mm -hmm. box in the system, you're, some of you are like, the pop-up box, there's a problem with it because I get it like every time I log in. <laughs> and there is a new update every time you log in. So we are uh, pushing a ton. The feedback is fabulous from you guys. Coming soon, custom order page questions. And we're going to do this to the nines. This is going to be so cool because you can create a question, assign it to an order page, a bundle, or a service. You'll have that hierarchy. Hmm. You can assign it to a client that's an agent or a company. And you will have that ability to assign that way. We have dependent questions. Is this a multi-unit property? Yes. If yes, how many units would you like us to photograph? That's a, a dependent question. So asking a question based on another, mm. based on an answer to a previous question. Also, one cool thing, I love this. You'll be able to add duration to the appointment based on the answer of the question. Oh, really? 
Yes. Nice. So is there an outbuilding? Yes. Do you want us to photograph the inside? Yes. Add five minutes, add 10 minutes. That is awesome. As a photographer in the field, I will love that. Yes, that is coming. And I don't know if we're going to hit this one. I'll mention it to you also. If we don't launch with it, it'll be version two, but you'll be able to suggest the add on of a service based on an answer to a question. Oh. Does this property have acreage? Yes. Boom. We suggest that you order this drone package. Oh, I love it. So I'm excited about this one. Now, this all goes into the, the, what, one of the, the, the main strengths of Spiro in that it, it's your online salesperson helping you suggest suggestively sell more. We want to help you sell more and serve your clients more effectively because what what happens, at least what I found, Todd, is I get into a routine shooting certain things for certain clients, and you get so busy with shooting that you don't have time to consult with them and, and talk about all that you can do beyond just the core services that you might be providing. So that ability for Spiro to be able to intelligently suggest other things based on, yeah, what, details about the property, oh, awesome. Yeah. I, I'm excited about this one. It's going to take about two weeks. There's there's some logic to finesse in here. So sure. again, it's it's going to be the middle of October to get that in there. But that is coming. Another thing is custom order page colors. I'm sorry, you guys. There's this orangish color on your order page right now. We don't even have those colors at our real estate media company. So nobody benefits by that orange color. So you'll be able to change it here very soon. That won't take two weeks. Uh, I sat with uh, Eli Jones and Kenny and Jared. Uh, that's where I was at over the last couple of days. And yeah, we talked about some things and it was a good to connect with them. I look forward to work, continuing to work with them. But uh, that's one thing they mentioned as well. And just with selling that, you know, we have some ideas of how to sell, how to educate. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm way past. I'm going to have to pay extra for the sponsorship spot. So I'm going to stop here. But exciting stuff coming and thank you guys yeah. for suggesting again just the last point i want to make is that we own a real estate media company and we use the system every day yep. i know some other systems out there either are claimed to own by or have are owned by people that have been real estate photographers in the past we do it every day so i'm right there with you we are right there with you craig and i the whole mm -hmm. team here we are using this every day and we are thinking about how we can solve your problems with software, how we can automate, how we can cross things off, get houses ready for you, streamline mileage, streamline your billing. And that's our goal for you. Right. Right. Which sets things up nicely for what we're going to talk about today. Mm. Um, you know, Todd, you mentioned that, yeah, we're, we're in this every day. We're, we're doing real estate media. Um, my role specifically at, at Wow Video Tours, which is that company um, beyond being on the Spiro podcast is I'm the business development specialist and the photographer and videographer for uh, the greater Toledo, Ohio area and Southeast Michigan. So I'm, I'm doing uh, sales type work and I'm shooting every day for our company and everything that I do in that role, it, it leads up to and goes through the, the, the shoot appointment, right? So I'm developing the relationships um, going to the, you know, the board meetings and events and, and networking. I'm, you know, I'm meeting for coffee, you know, with realtors and making presentations to brokerage offices. Just, just did a presentation this week that went well. Um, mm -hmm. and then I, I also get then to do the, you know, the, the actual shoot. So mm -hmm. all of that. And on most of these episodes that we've had on this Bureau podcast, Todd have all talked about all the things that lead up to the appointment and maybe a little bit about the appointment itself. But one right, thing that, right. yeah, one thing that we realized we haven't talked a whole lot about is what happens after the, the appointment, the, after the photography appointment at your realtor's listing. So that's what we want to dive into today. What happens after, how do we handle that from a business perspective of, okay, we've completed the shoot. Now what? Right. That's, that's where, you just need to make sure that you get the media, you know, you have this media, what do I do with it? And how do I streamline it? I know many of you out there are manually doing a lot of things. So I just want to tell you what we're doing at WOW. 
And this is a process that we've developed over the last 19 years. And that's putting, I don't know, that's probably over 100,000 jobs. I don't know how many jobs it is, but it's a lot of jobs. So we try to save as much time as possible. So Craig, let's start, let's start in the field. The yeah. shoot is complete. So mm -hmm. you, you know, you've, you're just walking out of the house. Hopefully a dog's not chasing you. See, and my problem, my problem has been cats, believe it or not. Oh, no kidding. Uh, yeah. Got I've, only time I've been attacked by an animal on an appointment was actually a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your mouth shut beyond that. Anyway. Yes. We've, we've made so it yes, out of the, you, alive out of the appointment. <laughs> that's good. Yes. You've made it out and you're walking back to your car and you get in your car. And the first thing that you need to do is you need to get anything in your head about the shoot. You need to either write it down or get it out of your head because mm -hmm. there's a good chance that something or many things happen that you either have editing notes, you either have maybe an appointment preparation concern where you might have spent more time and you might need to go back and educate that client or send them your getting ready guide. You might need to add or remove a service. So there's, there's a lot in your head right now that you just need to get down on paper or get into a system. And so you don't forget it so that the editor or your admin or you can take an actionable um, item, or you, you have an actionable list when you get back to your computer. So mm -hmm. you're gonna get back to your car and we have this built in the Spiro. So you're in the photographer portal. And when you complete a job, you just simply tap the button. It's going to ask you a few questions. The first question it's going to ask is pace level. So Craig, how, how, do you, how are we using pace level? And because this is still a process yeah. that you can, I know we're gonna tiptoe into the next step, which is not the photographer process. It's still being the photographer. What does that pace level do for us? Yeah, so it's a very simple setup. It's basically set up as a, 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 a traffic light, a red, yellow, green type of situation. So green obviously being, hey, this, shoot went really smooth. Everything was ready, shot everything in order. There was no problems. Breezed right through it. Yellow might be a situation where, okay, they weren't, the sellers weren't quite ready. They had to, you know, move a few things. I had, to, maybe I had to shoot out of order or wait, you know, five, maybe 10 minutes for them to finish something up. It just, it slowed down a little bit from what a normal green appointment would be. Red obviously would be, <laughs> It was mm. not ready. <laughs> you <laughs> you didn't shoot the media. You called the realtor and said, you don't want me shooting this or what do you want to do? And mm -hmm. the appointment just didn't happen. Yeah. It, and potentially, could it be that the, the appointment just was very slow? Maybe you had yeah. a client that wanted yeah. to move things room to room. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just yeah. and maybe you were you were late. That's probably the worst part of that. You know, besides our frustration, but being late to the next appointment mm -hmm. uh, is is a problem. So yeah, well, that's we mark those as red a red yeah. level uh, pace level. So you hit the pace level, and you need to note that. And one thing that you're going to do with that is you're going to keep that data. So down the road, you're going to look at it, and you're then going to educate. You're not going to rep reprimand. I mean, please do not call your agent and say your house wasn't ready. You got a red pace level. One, they're not going to know what you're talking what about, means. but right. yeah, but two, they're going to be very defensive mm -hmm. and rightfully so, because they're going to give you this idea, this song and dance and that it's not, you know, they don't have control over it. They helped educate. It was a one off. It was the first time they haven't been ready. So they're don't call them. Please don't call them. Mm -hmm. But this is a way that you can later down the road say, Hey, you know, we were out at a couple appointments and we just want to make, or we really appreciate your business. And we just want to make sure that you understand that we have, uh, we could drop off some getting ready guides to you. Also inside of our system, you can add your homeowners. We know how busy you are. You can put your homeowners right on the order. And then we will text message them a checklist that helps them prepare. You know, we want to take as much off of your plate as possible as a realtor. We know how busy you are. And so if you put your homeowners on the order, we're going to text message them when their appointment is. We're going to give them a checklist. We'll send them a reminder 
a day before and a one appointment before reminder, because we appreciate you as a client. We want to streamline your process and we want to help your homeowners prepare for our appointment so that we can deliver the best possible media of your listings. I love the way you phrase that. Yeah, it, it takes it. It disarms them because you're trying to add value to what they do. Yes, this is and this is this can be a sticky situation. Please don't call them again and say their house wasn't ready. Like you're going to you are walking down a road that isn't that's not going to end well. Raising my hand, we've done it from experience. So you'll that's pace level. The next thing that you're going you need to know or you need to think about is, did I shoot all of this property? <laughs> this seems very simple, but. Yeah. If you didn't shoot everything, probably the most common one, Craig, is they're getting the drone up in the sky. Not only weather can cancel that, rain, I mean, but wind mm -hmm. can cancel that. Uh, uh, you could have a no-fly zone or DJI wouldn't unlock you or something strange sure. happened where you couldn't. Yeah, all, all those fun things where you couldn't get the drone up. So you either need to reschedule that portion or you need to take off that add-on on the order. But there's just something to do, and you need to note that. So you need to note down, did you shoot all the appointment? Did you shoot partial? And then did you shoot, or did you shoot nothing? So that's the second step of remembering, what do I need to do with the order, either coming back or taking something off? And then two, a couple more things you need to note is uh, the bracketing so one important thing and we'll get to this with your editors is your editors need to understand how many final images they need to deliver back to you well there's a simple way to get that if you're bracketing your images your total number of images divided by the number of brackets the bracket count that you take yep so just for easy math if you take a hundred raw bracketed images and you shoot five brackets, that's 20 images that your editor needs to give back to you. So you tell Spiro how many brackets you take and then we do the math and we let your editor know and then we check that based on how many they upload back into the gallery. So that's the number of images or the bracket count. And then there might be something else that you need to note down. Mm -hmm. So you just have a simple text box. This could be editor comments, you know, please remove the sign. It, it could be anything, any, any editor or task comments. Uh, this could be anything else that your admins or your VA needs to see. But the goal here is that you get it out of your head and then you move on. Uh, and then your the, the people that are next in the step can pick it up. And then you don't have to, you know, everybody hates that sneaking suspicion where you're like, oh, and what am I forgetting? Yep. Yep. So get it out of your head. Our brains weren't wired to be a taskless reminder. They're really not. Our brains are incredible things, but they weren't wired to remember one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> so get it out. You can write it on paper or you can just put it right into the system. Right. Nice. Nice to have that photographer portal with, yeah, with those action items. Yeah. Guides you right along. Okay. So that's yeah. in your car. So now you're done. And you are headed back home and you have these raw S assets on a card. So you have all your media for the day on a card and you need to get it. Most of you need to get it online in the cloud to an editor. So the way that uh, we have found streamlines this is you need Dropbox folders created for you. So in the system, once you complete a job, folders are automatically created for you. And the way that we name our folders, and you can you can steal this even if you're not using Spiro, but <laughs> we create a year folder, so 2023. And then inside of that year folder, we have a quarter, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. This is just ways to break up your shoot so you don't have folders with hundreds, if not thousands, if not tens of thousands of folders inside of it. So this is just a nice way to break it up and keep it consistent and to keep it uh, delineated. Okay, so you have the year, the quarter, and then you have a folder for yourself, maybe your other photographer. So each photographer will have their own folder inside of there. And then inside of that photographer's folder is a folder for each shoot for each day. 
So the way that you would you should name those, and I'll give you my theory on this, is you should name them the date. And when you put the date, put the month with a zero, like so zero nine. Because in a computer, if you put one, just the number one, and you don't say zero one, it's not going to sort it correctly because it sees mm -hmm. one and then 10 as the next number. Right. It's just computers. I know, I know they're not so smart, but that's what they'll do. So you have to have 09, 29, 23. That's the way you should do the date. Put a space and then put the sequence number of your shoot. This is my first shoot, 01, second shoot, 02, third shoot, 03. Put another space and then put the address of the property, 123 Market Street. And then I suggest that you put another space and you put the agent's name. And then what this is going to allow you to do is inside a Dropbox, you'll be able to easily search the address. If you ever need to go back, say you need to go back two years in your Dropbox and find some media, you can search by the address and that Dropbox folder is going to show up. The mm. other cool thing is if an agent calls in, you can search by the agent name and you could find all of their media pretty quickly. So you got a Dropbox folder for every job. And Craig, I guess this is part of a process as well. So you do this process, right? That's true. Yeah. As, as one of the photographers, yeah, I come home and, and, uh, well, I mean, the system creates the folders for us and names them, but then I'm taking the media on the card card and putting them in the appropriate folders within those individual property folders, which leads to right. the so next level. Yeah, so all of the all of the Dropbox folders for each property are created automatically. And then inside of that folder, I know this is a nested, <laughs> nested, nested, but it works. It does. Inside of the inside of the job folder, you have other folders. So you might have photo, video, any folders you want. I think we do unedited photos, unedited yep. video. Then we have an other folder. So other media might be things that you're not going to have your editor edit for you, but you might just hold on because the agent might want it. If you are, if you're overshooting right now, if you're taking a couple extra shots and you're not having your editor deliver all of them, you might throw the images that you're not going to have the editor into an other folder. And then from there, we just do an edited photos and an edited video folder as well in our folder structure. Right. It's super simple to find everything this way. Yeah. And then, so right now, Craig, what's our process for, so you have everything on a card and you put it in your, in your computer. And then what are you doing from there? Yeah. So what I do is when I've completed a job out in the field through that photographer portal, through the Spiro system, that triggers a, an action that creates that Dropbox folder. So when I get home, the, all those Dropbox folders are created for me already. All I have to do is go into Dropbox and I download those property, um, property folders to my local machine. I mm -hmm. pop my SD card in, um, all of the listings that I've shot for the day, I have separated it into separate folders on the SD card because on my camera, I can create a new folder for each property. I'll take the photos. I, I click and drag those photos into the raw photos folder that I've downloaded from Dropbox. Same thing with my video files. Um, and, and that's pretty much what I do. And then we go into bridge and we do some organizing and, you know, I'll call the photos, things that I don't want edited. I'll just take those out. Like you said, if there's some extra shots that, uh, a good example of this is say some drone photos, I'll, I'm going to shoot the angles I think are best, but I might take, you know, say two, two or three extra angles because you never know if that realtor is going to want an angle that you didn't deliver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So smart. keep, keep those just in case. And then you've got it on hand. You don't have to go back out and shoot it. Um, so go through, I organize those, I call them, I rename them. And then I just re-upload that folder back to Dropbox. And from there, the editors take it. Nice. So we go, and that's one thing that I forgot about that, Craig, is we do an individual, we do, we create a new folder on the camera for each shoot, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So that is, so, and, and, and most cameras do this. I know Canon's do it. I know Sony's do it. And I don't have a lot of experience with other than that. But if you, um, if you just go into the menu system, you can create a new folder mm -hmm. and then anything taken, it goes into that folder. That's Correct. super nice. I, and in the past, oh my goodness, back in the black and white days, I, when we were shooting on, on mini DV tapes, I used to actually take a piece of paper in the field and oh, I would man. write with a Sharpie the address. Yeah. And I, I would zoom in on, on the Canon GL2. I'd zoom in to that address 
And then I would record a one second video clip so that I, I had a clip that was one second. So that would be my marker. And then I could, <laughs> I could look at the preview of that image and I would know what property it was. But yeah, if you're not creating a folder on your camera for every property, please do that. That will save you some time. Then you can just drag it all over into your Dropbox structure. And you'll probably do some organizing. We use Bridge. Bridge is actually free. I know many, uh, probably all of you pay for Photoshop like we do. But if you don't and you just your editors just have Photoshop, you can actually download Bridge for free. And you can use it without an Adobe license. And that will allow you to s quickly see your images. Sorry, Craig, go ahead. No, I, I was just going to make an aside when you said mini DV tape. It, I, I'm wondering if some of our younger listeners are asking the question, tape? What's tape? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. So they, we actually used to record on things that had rolls of shiny. I don't even know how to describe it, Craig. I was telling a kid one time how the first video games I ever played were on a cassette tape. And the kid looks at me ser all serious and goes, what's a cassette tape? I'm like, just, just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So I actually had that happen. So we just bought some of my boys. I've mentioned this before. They love the fish. So I bought I bought a little John boat, a little fishing boat. And we take it out on the reservoir and it had a cassette player in it. Oh, really? And I'm trying to think of the Yes, it did. And I'm trying to think of the way that Boston described one of those music things. I forget what he said, but it, it was just I was cracking up. I loved it. But yes, we used to actually shoot on tape. So you'd have mm -hmm. to record on tape and you'd get glitches and uh, <laughs> you would you would ruin your camera because you would record on your camera and then you'd put just as much mileage on it because you were playing back all that footage. So right now, you all you all who, you know, when you put your car in the camera and it takes, you know, eight minutes to import the stuff for the day. You got it really good because back yeah. in the day, if you take yes. an hour of footage, it would take you one full hour to play it back on your computer. Your computer would just record it as you're playing it off the yeah. camera again. Yeah. Uh, so, wow, how things have streamlined. Yeah. Anyway, That's okay. <laughs> so, so, yeah, get, get all that organized. And if you're not renumbering your images right now. I would, I would renumber your images. So mm -hmm. one through the last image. So, you know, if you're getting like a DSC or whatever the name is, 00725, 726, just in bridge, do a control A that will select all, do a batch rename, um, file batch rename and start with a, do a three digit number and start from Z, from one and then bridge will name it through the last one. So that, that will yeah. organize, that will make my OCD brain feel better. <laughs> <laughs> when they're all numbered correctly. Okay, so you drag that over, you put it online. Now, uh, that is uh, automatically created. And in the Spiro, we know what folder that is. So that what we've done is we've automatically shared that folder. Not only do we create it for you automatically, but now we've shared it with anyone who has a task. So we've shared it with your photo editor. We've shared it with your video editor or it's the merge fleet if you use the automatic editor, or anyone who has a task has that Dropbox folder shared straight to them. You don't have to type out an email. You don't have to click share, copy it, put a list to your editors. They already have it, they have access to it, and you don't need to worry about that. If you're using multiple editors, it's distributed to them based on how you want them to get it, and the system does all that for you. So no more typing out emails to them. Oh, wonderful. So now your editor has the, the, the task and inside of Spiro, they have a task manager so they can log in and see all their tasks. But if you've sent them an email, you know, if you're not using uh, the Spiro and you've sent them an email, they're going to go down the list and they're going to see any comments. Again, those comments that you put in the field when you were in the car, those carry over so your editor can view them now. They can see what needs done, what your special requests are, and your editor then goes and does their thing. Remember, the nice thing about this is your editor will see how many expected final images you have. Again, if you've uploaded 100 and you shoot five brackets, then they're going to see that you're expecting 20 images back. And what this does is this just helps with either failed uploads editors who've missed downloading all the images 
or mm. sometimes your editors will switch full uh, switch properties excuse me and it helps them stay organized you know it, you always kind of feel a little stu a, a little silly when you send a realtor a photo set and they call you back and like this isn't my property <laughs> It's Sometimes happened. they go, oh, I wish that, yeah, I wish that was my property. That's a really nice one. Right. <laughs> uh, a good, so just a good, knowing good those, double those check, simple right? things. Yeah, it's a, it's a good double check. Exactly, Craig. Yeah. So another cool thing that we track in Spiro is your editors will begin each task. And they'll, when they complete the task, we keep a timer. So you, you'll have an idea of how long these things take. It's really not so important with editors, but when we get to QC, we have our QC staff. That's important information for us. We need to know how long our QC team is taking mm. to actually do the quality check on each listing. What that's going to tie back in is that's going to help you pinpoint maybe an editor that needs educated a little bit more or needs a little more training. If one of your editors, if your QC team's taking, uh, you know, 50% longer to QC their jobs, then it's probably a good point to go and educate that editor or just at least go to the, to the team you're using and say, hey, we're spending 50% more time QCing. You know, can we make sure that X, Y, and Z is done? They have brighter ceilings, cooler tones, whatever it may be. But that data is super, super cool, at least to me. Now your editors are done. Your editors are done with editing and what they do now they need, now they need to get the photos back to you. So there's a couple ways that they can do this is one, it would be nice if they could just drag the photos back over the Dropbox. Remember we've shared the folder with them so they can just drag their images back into Dropbox. And we have the ability in Spiro to auto import those images right back into the gallery. So there's no sense for you to go into Dropbox to download the loads to drop, excuse me, download the folders locally to your computer and then upload them right back into your delivery platform. That's, that's a little bit of wasted time. And we know we've heard from you guys. We know that your time is so valuable and we know that you're busy in the morning. And some of you think about this. If some of you are blocking off the first couple hours of your day to do these tasks, you're saying no to shooting properties. So allowing your editors to drag their completed images right back into Dropbox will save them some time, will keep them happy, and then we're going to automatically take those images and we're going to put them right into Spiro, right in the gallery for you automatically. That's really nice. So that that's one of two ways that you can get photos back from the editors, correct, Todd? Yes, correct. So you you can still manually upload straight to the gallery. And this would be a case of if you are editing your own photos, there's no sense to take them from your local computer. You've just finished editing them, dragging them to Dropbox, and then waiting for the system to pull them in one by one. You can just go right to the property website builder, drag them okay. from your local folder right into the gallery, and they'll upload right in there for you. Nice. Nice. All right. So another another check, check mark here on the... Uh post shoot process. What's next? Yes. And what's next is QC. So we need to look at the images. So if you've edited them, you don't need to QC your own images. You can just hit deliver and it goes. But many of you out there are using editors and we need to look at them. And so after your photo after your editor, excuse me, completes the task of editing, uh, your QC person has a task to QC and they can see that they can complete the task or they can start the task and they will see if the editor actually uploaded the correct number of photos. So that's the first thing, 20 out of 20 images. So they'll see if they see when they scroll down their QC list in the, in the listings page that they have 10 out of 20 images, they know immediately that's a clue to, a clue to them that there's something missing. So you'll see the number of images. Did your editor actually give you back the correct number of images? If not, we probably need to have some communication with them. And then you're going to go right into that property website builder, right into the gallery that we've been talking about. And we've actually designed this to help streamline your QC. So you'll open up the gallery. You'll see all of the images. And you'll see them in four columns. Now, for me and my eyes, I like to see them larger. So we actually allow you to change the number of columns in that gallery right on your browser, right on your phone. So I like to do two 
columns. That allows me to see the image is large enough that I can detect if everything is okay. And so I'll scroll down. And if, if I ever want to change anything, if I ever want to note that an image needs something, I have a download little icon right by the image. So I'll just click download and it's going to go to my downloads and I'll keep scrolling down the gallery. If I need to see something larger, no problem, click on it and it will fill the entire screen. Mm -hmm. And then you can arrow key through the images because that's going to be your quickest. Even something like don't use your mouse to click, just use the arrow keys to go right, left, right, left. Mm -hmm. If when the images are enlarged on your screen and you need to download something, we've even thought of that. You just hit the D key on your keyboard. You oh, hit the nice. D key to, and it will download that image right for you. So now you've gone through all the images. You've identified what images might need adjustment. Now at this point, you're going to do one of two things. If the corrections are large enough, just say your editor was off completely and you want re-edit, you would need to go back to your editor. So you can message your editor, you can leave comments in the internal comments, but you can put it on them to make those adjustments. Many of us, at least here at WOW, will make minor adjustments for the editors. One, because, well, one and all of the above, it's just, it's just, it's just quicker. Hmm. You know, if I'm going to dodge or burn, or if I need to cool something down a little bit, I'm going to do it locally. So I've already downloaded all my images. They're in my downloads folder. I'm going to go back to Bridge. I'm going to browse my downloads folder. I'm going to sort by date modified. So I see those say four images that I've just downloaded, I can select those four images, click the first one, shift, click the last, it'll select all four, hit enter. They all open up in Photoshop. I'm using the dodge, the burn, I'm using an action to cool it down or whatever tools you wanna use. You're gonna correct those four images, save them, make sure they're flat as JPEGs, then you'll go back to Spiro in the gallery and you'll upload those back in. And the thing about it is, is it, as long as you don't change the file name, we will not duplicate those images. We will actually replace the old images. So if you downloaded the fourth, the seventh, the 23rd and the 33rd photo, we'll actually remove all of those images and put those corrected images back into the gallery right in that spot and we'll remove the old ones that you don't want. So save you a little bit of time there. Yeah, save you a little bit of time there. And now, uh, good news, you've got everything done, everything's QC'd and we need to just deliver this job. We've got a simple deliver button. You click deliver, email, you see a preview of the email and you can customize the email if you want to put a personal note at this point and then you hit send, the jobs mark is it sent, your client gets it and they're happy. One last thing as part of that post appointment process, when you've delivered it, the options in Spiro to either pay before download or uh, pay and unlock. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it is why we're doing this, correct? You know, it's why we're <laughs> right? doing the shoe. We, we'd like to get paid. So many of you and probably the most popular is a pay before download, which means your client will get a link to the images and they will get a preview of the image. So a nice preview and we watermark all of the images so that they can't steal them. And well, if they do, it's gonna look pretty bad on, on the MLS that <laughs> it says preview, you know, diagonally all the right. way across their images. <laughs> I, but so we watermark the images and then so your, your client can look at them, can uh, enlarge them if they'd like. And then they just click a simple button, a pay now button and uh, your, your Stripe portal pops up, they pay you. And then once we see that the payment has gone through, we redirect them to a page that does not contain the watermarked images. They can use them all, they upload to the MLS, and uh, they can then from there use your property websites, they can create marketing content. They are happy, you're paid, job's done, and you're off to do the next one. Perfect. A very thorough system to make sure that you've got all the all the boxes checked to have a successful appointment from the business development at the very beginning, earning that customer all the way through the appointment and the delivery, making it super simple and streamlined for you to be able to, like we say, manage and scale your business up. Yeah, it's just it's putting your time where you're where it's most effective and where it will pay off the most. And that's not 
manually creating Dropbox folders. That's yep. not manual sending emails or messages to your editors. That's not, it's none of those things, asking when the photos are gonna be done. It, all of that is done for you. You focus on building your business because that's what's going to take you and your family to the next spot. It's gonna help you reach your goals and you're not caught in the weeds. You can focus on the bigger items. Yeah. What I, what, one thing that I really like about this is by systematizing, systematizing, that's not even the word. <laughs> is that a word? It's just systematizing. I think it is. Yeah. It's okay. good for me. You always question, all of a sudden words sound strange to you. Anyway, by setting a system to this whole process and not having to do manual, you know, manual tasks, you're minimizing the chances for mistakes and you're creating, yes. you're creating a consistent experience for your clients that they know shoot to shoot exactly what to expect and things just, they, they run smoother. They run like clockwork. So yeah, great, uh, great back end explanation of, of, of what happens uh, through Spiro. Appreciate it, Todd. It's a win for systems. That's in my brain. You got a system. I love it. Yep. My brain's happy with systems. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Well, if I, I think that kind of wraps things up, um, uh, just a good, efficient way to manage uh, the back end of an appointment. And if you have questions about that, you know, feel free to, to drop Todd a line. You can email at uh, hello at Spiro.media. And if you have uh, other idea, you know, other questions about the business side or systems or efficient ways of, of running your, your real estate media business, again, we would love to tackle those, those questions. So always feel free to give us topic suggestions. And if we don't know the answer to it, we'll find somebody that doesn't have them on the podcast. So send uh, us a I, pun, send us your dad <laughs> joke. I mean, I'll, I'll read the top two or three next week. Send us, you know, oh, give I would us your love best. That. Let's okay. Let's do a pun off. Let's see if you have you versus Craig, and oh. we'll put Craig on the oh, we'll man. put Craig on the spot. So you send me your pun. We'll pick the best couple of them, and this will be like you know, like the old rap offs in the day, or you know, they, this is going to be a pun off. 2023. I will never claim to be the best at it, but I will have a ball doing it, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's uh, going to take us up on this. Some, I sure hope so. I hope so. I hope so. I'll yeah. <laughs> we're going to lose Great. we're going to lose more listeners. Anyway, oh. we might we might gain some. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> all right. Well, Todd, thank you for all that. Any any final thoughts from you? Thanks for staying with us today. We are yeah. excited to have you guys. If you have questions, let me know. Hello at Spiro.media. You actually get me. Uh, I'm building a team as well. So some of you get on. You're like, oh, it's you. Yes, it's me. I'm yeah. <laughs> some. It, and I, I love that. That's so great. I love to spend time with you guys. But it, I, I'm just a normal guy here in the cornfields yeah. of Ohio. We've built some software. I've done this for a long time. I'm happy to help you. I get fulfilled by it. So send me an email. Yeah, you'll literally get me. Yeah. And if you have questions, overall questions, you just kind of want to explore things, check out the website. Again, it's just Spiro.media. We've got some great knowledge base articles. If, if, if you have specific questions about processes within the software, um, we're continually building those and, and uh, flushing those out as well. So check it out, Spiro.media. All right, Zod, thank you. Great. Uh, another great episode. Great information. We appreciate everything. That was a pleasure. It's great to be here with you all today. All right. You guys have a great rest of your week. We always like to remind you, take time to be thankful for the blessings in your life. Make sure you take a breath. Have a great week. Thank you for joining us for the Spiro podcast, managing your real estate photography and videography business. This is a production of Spiro and Wow Video Tours. You can find out more about Spiro's real estate media business management software at our website, spiro.media.